There are many texture descriptors in the literature. I'm going to talk about two of them, the co-occurrence matrices and the LBP. First, the co-occurrence matrix. It captures relationships between pairs of pixels. The idea is to build a matrix that will codify the, uh, this relationship in terms of the intensity levels that occur in a pair of pixels. It considers a fixed distance, Q, between two pixels. One is the reference and the other one is the neighbor. For example, a Q value of 0, 1 means that the neighbor is found by shifting 0 pixels in the X direction, the row, and 1 pixel in the Y direction, the column. So in this particular case, what we are considering to be the neighbor is the pixel at the right hand side. So to illustrate this method of building a co-occurrence matrix, let us consider Q equal to 0, 1. So this means that by fixing a, a pixel, say I'm, I'm fixing this uh, pixel here, what I'm trying to do is to observe what is the intensity level of the pixel uh, on the right hand side of it. I'll be able to compute this the co-occurrence, that means um, the, uh, when we observe a, an intensity level at the reference and at the neighbor. We are going to compute that for every pixel of an image with L gray levels. And in this example in particular, we cannot compute the co-occurrences at the right border because those pixels at the right border do not have a right neighbor. So we just discard those pixels that for, for which we cannot compute the co-occurrence. Then we build a matrix. We call that a G matrix given by this fixed Q shift value and all pair of intensities. This means that the matrix will have the number of columns and number of rows proportional to the number of gray levels, that means L. And then for every X and Y, we are going to uh, sum, so this, uh, this norm here will sum the pair of the pixel, the central pixel, so at X and Y, equal to some intensity I, and how we observe a frequency, uh, an intensity J at a pixel with a shift D of X and D of Y. So we observe then when we observe a pair of intensities I and J respectively at the reference and neighbor pixel, then we count one to that value. So let's say we have this um, this image here on the left hand side. So this, those are uh, values of gray, just to exemplify, and those are the actual gray levels. So in this case, we consider we only have four different gray levels, so 0, 1, 2, and 3, to make the uh, example smaller here. So when we consider just the right pixel at the neighbor, and say we compute this first one here, so 0 is this, the reference pixel. So its neighbor is also zero. That means we sum in this column here. Why is that two? Because we observed two times a co-occurrence between two values of zero in reference and then the neighbor as well. Where do they occur in those two pixels here? So the first one, if, uh, the position zero, zero and in position one, zero. For those two zeros here, the co-occurrence is between 0 and 1, 0 and 1, that is coded here in this uh, cell. And for the next zero is 0, 2, so one occurrence of 0, 2. So by now you probably um, have followed that for every reference pixel, I will count the occurrences of neighbor pixels in different intensities. So this cell here means that 
reference pixel equal to one and a neighbor one occurs four times a reference pixel of two with a neighbor pixel of two happens five times and so on and so forth usually this matrix is sparse especially when consider l to be a larger value so it's very common to requantize the image as we did for color to work with a smaller uh, number of intensities for example 64 32 we can also normalize this matrix in order to interpret it as a probability estimate of a given pair of intensities to be observed in an image so in this case for example we have a probability of 25% uh, of random uh, when we random pick a pixel to observe a pixel that will be a pixel uh, with a value of 2 and whose neighbor is also 2 So this matrix here can be large and hard to be used really for uh, actual texture description. So what we often do with this matrix is not use the actual matrix, but to compute descriptors or statistical measures from this matrix. Those are called Haralik descriptors. So this uh, just defines the mean and the variances of respectively rows and columns of the co-occurrence matrix G. So I'm, I'm just um, computing those, pre-computing mean and variance in order to save computational time. So there are many um, descriptors that can be used in, in the case of when we, when we say uh, Haralik descriptors that were um, proposed by Robert Haralik in 1973. Although there are uh, many of them, there are six that are often used due to be uncorrelated with each, each other because uh, most of them were shown to be correlated, so they are not uh, complementary, though they don't offer new information. So the first one is the maximum probability. So just take the strongest, strongest response of that matrix in the range between zero and one. So the maximum value in this case here, this would be um, 25, so 0.25. The second one is the correlation. It, uh, it will measure the correlation between pixel reference and neighbor in the range minus one to one. So it operates on the actual intensities, I and J. And this requires the standard deviation of both row and columns to be different, um, different of zero, because otherwise we're going to have a division by zero and we don't want that. So we, we, can, uh, we have to implement something to cope with this type of error. Another, um, Description is the contrast between the intensity of pixels. So it works with um, the intensity levels as well. So it's the square root of the difference of the intensity levels that appear in the matrix product with the actual probability of them to happen. So if a pair of probabilities don't happen, it's just zero. And the energy, which is the sum of the squares of every probability, Finally, we have homogene homogeneity, which measures the spatial autocorrelation, and entropy, which measures the randomness of G. And those are uh, three examples of images that have different textures, and we can see that by looking at the Harlick descriptors, the, it makes sense. So, for example, here we have a random totally random image so the maximum probability of finding a pair is low because we, we we see randomly many occurrences of pairs of values so the maximum probability is low while in this case the maximum probability is quite high because we observed the um, lots of uh, um, of pixels are always with the same neighbor we can also uh, see here that in, in this case we have a um, 
something intermediate in between those two. The correlation <coughs> is also small for the random uh, value, a little bit higher for the well-behaved texture, and a little bit lower in this case for uh, the rocks. The contrast is very high for random, and then uh, this is we have a high contrast here in between black and white values, so it uh, makes sense that to be higher. The uniformity also measures very well what it happens in between the images, the homogeneity as well, and the entropy. So all uh, descriptors are really useful, and it uh, they have uh, a meaning that is that's easy to interpret. Another descriptor that became um, almost the standard when when we're uh, using texture analysis with the Haralik descriptors as well uh, are the local binary patterns. They were first proposed in 1996, however, they have many variants afterwards. It's based on the idea that texture is described by two complementary informations, local spatial patterns and gray level contrast. So let be uh, two parameters, P with uh, there are sampling points and R is the radius in which I'm going to sample that points. The most usually, uh, the most uh, used configuration is this first one. So I'm going to consider the uh, central pixel, the red one here, and the neighbors to be all of them, all those points sampled in, in this radius. We could, for example, use a uh, high, higher value of uh, radius and more pixels, for example, 12. So I'm going to measure, so I would uh, sample na neighbors around that region here, ignoring, for example, the, those neighbors that are closer to the central point or even higher values of radius. So this method produces a code. It is called LBP code. This LBP code is basically uh, obtained by taking the difference between the central pixel and the remaining ones. The, the code will be zero for a neighbor if it is below the value of the, um, of the central pixel and one if it's above the value of the central pixel. So let me give you an example to illustrate. So say we have a neighborhood in, uh, as in the left hand side here. So the central pixel value is 5. What would be the LBP code for this region centered at this pixel 5? Well, I'm going to compare, so I'm going to, uh, to threshold it. So any value that is at least 5 or more will become 1. So say here 9, 6 and 5. So those two will become 1. Those values that are less than 5 will become 0. So 1, 2, 2, 1, and 3. So I, start, uh, I, I have to define where I start. But let's say I start here in the, uh, the pixel from the right side. So I form the code by just concatenating those values, those um, binary values. So binary here is 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0. And I can convert this binary value into a decimal one. So this means that I have a pattern that can be um, represented by the decimal 152. In the slides, I have a detailed way of how to compute it by using powers of two. So I just use power of uh, two um, to, this, to the zero. So that means I'm computing the first code the just the first value in this case here for a, a pixel centered at the position one one what we would have is zero uh, one minus zero which will uh, be at the first position of the code two minus zero would become uh, at the second position two minus zero again zero minus zero 0 minus 0, 0 minus 0, 0 minus 0 again, and 1 minus 0. This S value here is the threshold function. So composing the actual code is like that. So I, I will uh, have those values which will be in decimal 
135. For the position 2, 3, so let's say 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, 3 is 1, we have another very different um, code because see that in this case I have like, a, like stripes here, so 1, 2, and 3. And in this case, I don't have it. I don't have a, uh, that, that type of pattern. And similarly, for 3-3, three, three, uh, which I believe is this one. So um, let's see, one, 0, 1, 2, 3. Yeah, we have all values equal to 0. So a code can be either uniform or non-uniform, given the number of transitions it has. Well, the transitions is the transitions from 1 to 0 or 0 to 1. For example, all 1s, no transition. If I have 1 followed by 0, 1 transition, 1 followed by 0, 1 transition, plus 0 followed by 1, 2 transitions. Uh, uniform patterns are those that have at most 2 transitions. All with uh, 3 or more transitions are considered non-uniform patterns. So the, um, for example, if we use a code with 8 bits, there are 256 codes. However, c uh, 58 are uniform. So we can use a, we can count all uniform uh, codes independently and uh, just sum all the non-uniform ones into a single category. So we total, then it would be 59. What is then the local binary pattern descriptor? Basically a histogram of those decimal values here that we compute by using the code. So the fictive vector can be produced by a histogram of LBP codes. And each LBP can be considered a micro, micro texton. Local primitives codified by each position of the histogram may define different shapes and characteristics. For example, when we have this, is all zeros, we probably have a spot, so a, a pixel here that's higher than the, the neighbors. Uh, when we have all ones here, we may have a spot or a flat region. A line is characterized by a, a single transition or two transitions but with just two ones, an edge or a corner and so on. We can then study those local patterns and see that they represent different shapes, different shape characteristics that can be useful to analyze texture, um, not only by considering the histogram, but also locally in the image.